हेलो फ्रेंड्स लेट अस नाउ लर्न सम इम्पोर्टेंट पॉइंट्स अबाउट ओटोस्क्लीरोसिस ओटोस्क्लीरोसिस इज ए हेरिडिटरी लोकलाइज्ड डिजीज ऑफ द बोनी लैबरिंत हियर यू विल सी प्रेजेंस ऑफ अल्टरनेट फेजेस ऑफ बोन रिसॉर्प्शन विल बी देयर एंड बोन फॉर्मेशन विल बी देयर हियर सो बोन फॉर्मेशन एंड बोन रिसॉर्प्शन विल बी अल्टरनेटिंग विथ ईच अदर सो वॉट इज द इटियोलॉजी इटियोलॉजी इज इट इज ऑटोसोमल डॉमिनेंट लेयर विच इज इन्वॉल्व इन फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ केसेस इन फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ केसेस इट इज ऑटोसोमल एंड इट इज हेरिडिटरी इफ यू सी मेल्स इज टू फीमेल्स रेशियो इट इज ऑलवेज कॉमन इन फीमेल्स एंड इट ई विल एग्रीविएट इन प्रेगनेंसी एंड ऑल्सो इन मेनोपॉज दिस कंडीशन विल एग्रीविएट इट इज मोस्ट कॉमनली सीन इन एज ग्रुप ऑफ ट्वेंटी टू फोर्टी फाइव ईयर्स ऑफ एज एंड द ट्रिगरिंग फैक्टर ऑफ ओटोस्टीरोसिस इज मेनली वायरल इन्फेक्शन दिस इज मोस्टली ए बायोलेटरल डिजीज विथ सेवेंटी फाइव टू एटी परसेंट ऑफ केसेस बींग बायोलेटरल देन इफ यू सी द साइट द मोस्ट कॉमन साइट ऑफ द ओटोस्टीरोसिस इज फिस्यूला एंटे फेनेस्ट्रम फिस्यूला एंटे फेनेस्ट्रम इज द मोस्ट कॉमन साइट दिस इज एक्चुअली एंटीरियर टू द राउंड विंडो देन वी ऑल्सो हैव other sites like we have round window area like in round window area at the stapedial foot plate there can be there or it can be present in internal auditory canal and semicircular canals so these are the sites of photosteroses it is most commonly seen in fistula ante fenestrum which is present anterior to the oval window the other sites would be round window stapedial foot plate and internal auditory canal and semicircular canal also now if we see the types of otosclerosis we have number 1 stapedial type or fenestral type this stapedial type is the most common type which is actually fistula ante fenestrum here the histopathology is here you will see presence of blue mantles is seen in stapedial type the second type is called has cochlear type or also called has fenestral type in cochlear type or fenestral type it mainly involves the round window then the third type we have histological type in histological type here the lesion is mainly detected in the postpartum examination so stapedial type is most common which is in the fistula ante fenestrum then we have cochlear type or fenestral type which involves the round window and then we have histological type which is which involve which is seen in postpartum conditions then then if you see the clinical features the clinical features include the patient presents with deafness that too he presents with bilateral conducting hearing loss 15% of cases it is unilateral hearing loss here the patient patient presents with paracusis villisi what is paracusis villisi here the patient hears better in noisy environment the patient hears better and the patient also have tinnitus also sometimes this tinnitus <coughs> tinnitus with sensory neural hearing loss is seen in cochlear type of otosclerosis so most common type is stapedial otosclerosis that is the reason why 85% most of the cases are bilateral conductive hearing loss but there are some minority of cases which are uh, cochlear hearing loss because in them there will be tinnitus and sensory neural hearing loss will be seen next next if you see the voice of the patient the voice of the patient is actually quiet and low volume speech because they hear their own voices while they they are talking that is the reason why they have vo low volume speech because they hear their own voices by bone conduction and thus they talk slowly so vertigo is not seen in these patients except in cochlear hearing loss where you see tinnitus sensory neural hearing loss and vertigo on examination on otoscopic examination you will see that the tympanic membrane is normal in most of the patients and it is mobile but in only 10% of the patients you will see presence of flamingo pinkish blue tympanic membrane this flamingo pinkish blue tympanic membrane is called has quartz sign and this is actually this quartz sign is indicative of active focus um this is indicative of act, active focus so whenever there is quartz sign remember presence of this quartz sign is actually a contraindication for surgery because now the patient is in 
uh, active stage so in active stage we cannot do surgery but if squat sign is positive then you can do sodium fluoride therapy can be done in the patient if the squat sign is positive okay next next the tests are if you see the tests tuning fork test can be done in the tuning fork test you will see conductive hearing loss and if there is complete fixation of the stapes foot plate is seen in such cases if there is complete fixation of stapes foot plate then it is always 80 decibels hearing loss then Rennes, because it is conductive hearing loss Rennes test will be negative Weber's test will be towards the uh, hearing loss with greater hearing loss and absolute bone conduction test or square back test will be normal then if you see the audiogram air bone gap will be present more than 15 decibels so all these are seen in any conductive hearing loss then we have tympanometry or audiometry so in tympanometry we have first impedance audiometry will be there in impedance audiometry because there is autosclerosis so there is sclerosis of tympanic membrane that is fixation of the if there is fixation of the stapes foot plate then we have as type of audiogram will be seen in impedance audiometry then if you do an acoustic reflex acoustic reflex is one of the earliest sign of autosclerosis then in autosclerosis in earlier stages there will be diphasic on and off pattern will be there okay next then one of the thing is about the acoustic reflex in the early stages if there may be on and off pattern of biphasic reflex will be there that is in some cases it is present in some cases it is absent okay whereas in later stages at the advanced disease the steperial reflex is completely absent then the next important thing is about the pure tone audiometry in pure tone audiometry in in normal autosclerosis the bone conduction is normal but there is one dip is seen in the bone conduction this is seen in the bone conduction at 2000 hertz and this is called as kahat notch this is actually seen only in bone conduction not in air conduction okay next Next, if you see about the histological autosclerosis, this histological examination is a gold standard for autosclerosis where you will see the study of bilateral temporal lobe should also be done. Uh, then in histological autosclerosis, you should do study of the bone bilateral temporal bone should also be done then imaging studies like high resolution ct scan can also be done then how are you going to treat the patient the treatment of patient is you can do observation in the observation this is least leaky and risky and least expensive option so in this it is preferred in patients with unilateral hearing loss we use observation unilateral mild conductive hearing loss we can do we can observe the patient we can get an audiograms done on yearly basis and hearing loss will progress slowly then we have medical therapy in the medical therapy first we can use sodium fluoride therapy in the sodium fluoride therapy it is given at the dosage of 50 to 70 milligrams per day for almost one to two years so what does this sodium fluoride therapy do it will decrease the bone resorption osteoclastic bone resorption is decreased and increases the osteoblastic bone formation so sodium fluoride will decrease the osteoclastic bone resorption and it will increase the osteoblastic bone formation this will also increase the proteolytic enzymes it will also increase the proteolytic enzymes which are actually toxic to to cochlea then here we are actually giving fluoride in the form of sodium fluoride what are we giving we are giving fluoride so fluoride is dangerous to our body if it is given in higher concentrations so this mainly causes fracture of long bones and the spine so in order to make sure you should observe the thickness of the bone that is by x-ray by doing x-ray spine and x-ray long bone should be done and then you will observe the thickening of the trabeculae with the help of x-ray long bone and short bone you will observe the thickening of the trabeculae can be done then what about the indications in the indications you can do cochlear autosclerosis 
where when do you give sodium fluoride sodium fluoride is given if there is positive quartz sign that is if there is positive or active focus of infection going on then you give um, sodium fluoride then it is also given in cochlear otosclerosis you will give uh, sodium fluoride so these are the different conditions where sodium fluoride is given now what are the side effects of sodium fluoride one obviously long bone fractures will be seen and then you will also see what is the most common side effect gi disturbances are the most common side effects which are seen in um, uh, in which are seen with sodium fluoride therapy then if you have to see the contraindications of sodium fluoride therapy is you should not give it in patients with chronic nephritis or in patients with chronic rheumatoid arthritis it is contraindicated in pregnant women and lactating women and in children so what are the contraindications of sodium fluoride it is contraindicated in chronic nephritis then chronic rheumatoid arthritis pregnant women and lactating women and children then we have the next therapy is we can do bisphosphonate therapy so in the bisphosphonate therapy we give alendronate and etidronate is given to the patient this alendronate and etidronate will inhibit the resorption of the bone and thus they will increase the bone remodeling this is actually tried in otosclerosis and here the side effect is that we have gi symptoms as gi symptoms like nausea and vomiting and diarrhea occur due to bisphosphonate therapy next next if you see surgical treatment is done when do you do surgical treatment it is done mainly if the air uh, bone gap if air bone gap is around at least it should be at least 25 to 30 decibels if the hearing threshold is more than or equal to 30 decibels and if renis test is negative and if the speech discrimination score is more than or equal to 60% and the patient has profound hearing loss in these conditions we do surgery so when do you do surgery surgery is done surgery is done in the patients with air bone gap of at least 25 to 30 decibels hearing threshold of more than or equal to 30 decibels then is negative speech discrimination test of more than 60% and if the patient has profound hearing loss then we do um, surgery then what are the contraindications of surgery contraindications if you wanted to know the absolute contraindication for surgery is if there is only hearing ear then that is absolute contraindication for surgery occupations like athletes divers and um, air travelers or those who work in the a uh, noisy environment should not undergo surgery and those we, if it is associated with meniere's disease then we should not do surgery and the other relative contraindications include pregnancy young children otitis externa otitis media tympanic membrane perforation or inner ear malformations or in exostosis so in all these conditions you will not see you in all these conditions surgery is contraindicated surgery is contraindicated in uh, first absolute contraindications are if there is only hearing ear occupations like athletes divers air travelers and those who work in noisy surroundings or if there is associated meniere's disease or in pregnancy and young children relative contraindications include pregnancy young children otitis externa otitis media tympanic membrane perforation inner ear malformations and exostosis and if the patients are medically unfit so in all these conditions the surgery is not done then then if you see we can do stepid what what is the surgery done now the treatment of choice is stepidotomy is the treatment of choice for Uh, otosclerosis previously stepidectomy was done with prosthetic replacement that is the earlier treatment of choice but later it has not been continued because that has resulted in increased sensory neural hearing loss and it has resulted in increased perilymph leak and has a result nowadays the best surgery and treatment of choice is stepidotomy other surgeries like laser stepidotomy can also be done and stapes modification have also are are also being done thank you